sensitive child. He came home with questions after every one of those health classes. It was exhausting. It was a little terrifying at times. But it started conversations. But even then, he also came home with those questions from when he heard in the playground in the bathroom. I've learned to dread that once it started, Mom, I heard. I knew it was going to be something bad. But I would talk to him about those, but I also knew that there were professionals at the school that would speak to them. And that the conversations they had in their health class and in their sex education spilled into other discussions about relationships and healthiness in their regular classroom. For my younger son, the first three day classes of Know Your Body, the program, he would talk to me. The fourth one, is that how you think you're Know Your Body today? Horrible. Well, what happened? Who was it about? Hormones. And then he wouldn't talk about it for about two years. <laughs> the conversations did start up again. We had those conversations, but I can rest assured that you know he didn't want to talk to me. And believe me, I you know wanted to talk to him about everything. That there was somewhere that he was getting healthy, <coughs> accurate, comprehensive education. So it enhanced my role as a parent. It made me feel confident for my two very different kids that they were getting what they needed to become healthy young men. And I do think that when you have those programs, parents learn a lot from them. And regardless of the, you know, how you structure it, parents will learn and will be able to enhance their children's education. Thank you.
One of the takeaway messages I heard from students who came to the center seeking to talk to someone was that they wish they had known earlier how to have a conversation about consent in a sexual situation. These are real skills that people need to practice just as much, if not more, than the other academic curriculum that we learn in school. Learning how to have healthy relationships in academic settings, in work settings, and sexual settings is crucial to the success of an individual. Chairwoman Chang Diaz, Chairwoman Paish, and members of the Joint Committee on Education, I, Gabrielle Newton, am pleased to offer this testimony in support of an act relative to healthy youth. In my role as a college student and campus organizer, I understand the beneficial impact this bill would have on us as residents of the Commonwealth. As a resident of Wolverham, Massachusetts since birth, and a product of the public school system in this state, I experienced a poor standard of sexual education in my third year at Minnetonka Regional High School in Western Massachusetts. Even though the majority of my fellow peers were already sexually active by our junior year, the sexual education curriculum revolved around the abstinence-only method. Learning very little about the implications of unprotected sex, many of my classmates were more concerned about unplanned pregnancies than contracting sexually transmitted infections. I remember walking out of the last day of my sex ed class, believing that when I, when I became sexually active, the safest way to ensure I did not get pregnant was, if not abstinence, oral sex. It wasn't until I entered Boston University my freshman year that I fell upon the Women's Resource Center. There, I discovered that STIs can be transmitted from any physical contact between people. When I learned this, I immediately thought about my friends back in high school who may never stumble upon a women's resource center like I had, and would never learn about the benefits of learning how to put on a condom correctly to protect against unplanned pregnancies and STIs. I immediately thought about one of my close friends from senior year of high school who could not understand how she could contract an STI when she knew for a fact that she vowed to not have sexual intercourse until marriage. My sister, who is now a junior in high school at Minnetonka where I graduated, just recently received the exact same sexual education that I received. Upon picking her and a few friends up from school, they told me that the major take home point that they left the class with was that oral sex or abstinence was the safest way to go because it allows people the freedom of having sexual pleasure and a 100% guarantee of not getting pregnant. What scared me most about this statement was that she neglected to tell me about the concerns of contracting STIs in this process. This assumption of oral sex being a safer kind of sex is a repeated cycle that I hope stops today with the passing of this bill. I was fortunate enough to receive a more comprehensive sexual education in college, but the chances of other kids in my high school class who end up getting to college and then stumbling upon a resource that educates them on the importance of practicing safer sex is very slim, and for the most part, too late. Thank you.
uh, the whole issue around sex education is, and becoming even more so. I want to speak to that as well. I know this morning we had the press here and the room was filled and uh, there were a number of bills that were heard. And I'm speaking to uh, a number of those bills, but definitely to my bill, which is 388. Uh, and it's a bill that talks about sex education, but more importantly, it talks about the phenomenon that goes along with the misunderstanding of one's sexual behavior. And that's the whole issue around violence as it relates to young people and as they work through their own sexual knowledge. Um, uh, we see it played out uh, in the greater Roxbury community and throughout the city of Boston where there's a lot of pushing and shoving after school and sometimes ending up with a real serious altercation. Men on women, young men on young women, and sometimes women young women and girls amongst each other. Because there's a whole confusion around the sexual behavior and youth. How you deal with adolescence and how you deal with uh, your sexual feelings as well. The other thing that I want to speak to is the issue around STDs and all of the sexually transmitted diseases. That though we have in my district, I represent the Suffolk Suffolk District, every hospital uh, campus is in my district. Uh, most of the educational campuses are in my district, so I have an opportunity to speak not only with the hospitals and get some of the stats from the hospitals, but also to talk to some of the students in the area, both high school students and college students, because this is not just an issue for the very, very young. The whole issue around sexually transmitted diseases goes from the time that one might be sexually active all the way to the time that you might be in your grave and before that sexually active. Uh, the fact of the matter is that people are having sex longer and so we have to look not only to our youth but also the issues of sexually <coughs> transmitted diseases in older people as well. Uh, unfortunately, because we have all of the advertisements around um, uh, uh, Extends and Viagra and all of that, then there is a whole other issue that we need to talk about uh, as well. But today I'm talking specifically to um, 388 and the importance of us having a healthy relationship with our young people as it relates to sex and conversations that we have with sex. Not only in our schools, but in our homes, and in the places where people feel the most comfortable. There was a time when our churches were not willing to deal with it in the African American and Latino community. That is no longer the case per se. There are some churches that are more actively involved with making sure that our young people have an understanding of what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable in terms of their sexual behavior. And there are other churches that are coming along with that because you can't deny that our young people are inquisitive and they are, in a lot of instances, sexually involved. So we have to be very, very clear, though we want to make sure that young people are not moving into the direction of having sex without understanding what the outcomes are and all of that. We want to make sure that we cover every young person, no matter what level they're at. And we want them to understand what they're getting themselves into. Um, I um, you know, have raised two sons, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. And my youngest son works with adolescents with HIV and AIDS, so I've traveled extensively talking about uh, young people and adolescents in particular that are suffering from the virus. So I don't mean to scare the young people to death, but I do want to share some of them really low down stuff that goes along with sex if you're not getting the information that you need to get. So I would ask that this committee uh, pass 388 favorably, and I'd like to uh, talk about um, the um, Senator Brownberger's um, bill, um, Senate Bill 201, um, very good bills. All of these bills actually for the most part, have been very, very well uh, thought out. Uh, Henriquez and Brownsberger's bills, 
uh, House Bill 4 2021 as it relates to sex education in the schools, sex education uh, with students is very, very, very important. And we all ought to be working on this. So I'm glad to see that the room was packed. I was upstairs or downstairs at a, a housing hearing and couldn't get away as vice chair of housing. But I'm happy that you've taken a few moments and allowed me to just share some of my thoughts. And hopefully, uh, when all of these bills are passed, we're going to see the end of some of the unwanted pregnancies that we have in our communities, even though we're working on it night and day, we still see that the numbers are still too high for a very healthy community. So we have to be very, very upfront um, with this as we talk to folks about it, as we encourage parents and maybe teach parents how to talk to the young people, because that's a problem as well. Once again, I would ask that you uh, pass uh, 388 and a number of those bills that I had earlier mentioned uh, out favorably. And I thank you, all of you, for uh, taking the time to listen to me. If there are questions, I'm willing. Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is Paula Barbara Cohen and Kelly, is it Manas? Thank you. 
students? What about our students who have been sexually abused? We need medically accurate and appropriate sexual education for all of the health of our students. We need this bill. One more short point. When training teachers to teach sexuality education, we use comprehensive programs. But the teachers need this bill backed up by policy and frameworks to support their teaching so they, they are teaching and know what is required of them. We have this for all other subjects. We need this bill for sexuality education. Thank you very much. My name is Kelly Lamas, and I am a public health professional working for the Boston Health and Public Health Commission as a health educator. And I am testifying in support of House Bill 450 S209, an act relative to healthy youth, and H421, an act relative to comprehensive health education in schools. In my role as a health educator, I understand the beneficial impact that both these bills would have on us as residents of the Commonwealth. I know this because firsthand, I know there's currently no benchmark for sexuality education. An act relative healthy to youth will help ensure that more young people will have access to comprehensive, medically accurate, and age-appropriate education. Research has indicated that comprehensive sexuality education will keep youth healthy, informed, and safe, enhancing their learning ability. As a result, I am a product of the Massachusetts public school system. Although a graduate and student of this wonderful public school system, I unfortunately never received education in one very important area of life, and that is sexuality. I never had sexuality education. I come from a community in Western Mass that does not acknowledge sexuality, let alone any form of education that enables an individual to make healthy decisions when it comes to sexual health. Now, years later, with a Master's of Public Health and working as a health educator in the Boston Public Schools, I have come to learn the value of teaching comprehensive sexual health education and the power of the teacher and student connection. I find it incredibly moving and beneficial to have the opportunity to empower students with the knowledge, skills, and information they need to holistically function in a world played with this mixed messages of sexuality, health, and relationships. The youth are our future, and they hold the keys to the continued success of our state, our nation, and our public school system. It is imperative that we address the needs of these students accurately and constantly find new ways to ensure that they are informed and have the adequate resources to lead healthy and productive lives. I believe that an act relative to healthy youth will support this mission. Here in the Commonwealth Health Educators Group, we need quality education. This bill acts in the best interest of our young people by keeping them informed, healthy, and in school. Please vote in favor of an act relative healthy to youth and an act relative to comprehensive health education in schools.
and not a lot about oneself. This bill will teach young people about sex, not morality, religious values, or principles. That is usually taught at home for better or for worse. This bill teaches the subject that we are all subject to and products of. It teaches about pregnancy, ironically the number one reason is girls drop out of school. It teaches about STIs, which you heard earlier, are in my district are four times higher than the rate in the rest of Boston throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This is about teaching youth at age-appropriate levels what their mind and bodies are hardwired for in a manner where they can make responsible decisions about sex, which are offer their lives, their family lives, and their community. I ask you to think back to your preteen and teen or even your 20s. For some of us, that's not too long ago. I know some people think back a little further, but not too far. I was 12. My mother gave me a book about sex. Then from 15 to 18, I learned from my peers. And you can only imagine how scary that is for you parents out there. Uh, other 16 and 17 year olds telling me what they may or may not have actually done or seen. Uh, and then for the next few, few years, I left home for a date or a party. My mother would stick her head out of the window and yell, keep it covered. <laughs> I grew up in a household with two loving parents, an older brother, but that was the basic um, premise of my comprehensive sex education. Um, and to that, I will say that we can do better. We can offer comprehensive sex education, life science, not morality, education, not promiscuity, information, and not myths, but truths about the human body and its reproduction, perhaps the most important information for humans. So I ask you to be smart about our future. I agree that curriculum should be made available to parents and guardians, and I hope that all parents review all curriculums uh, that is offered to their students. I agree there should be a strong consensus to what age appropriate means. However, I disagree that we should continue to look for reasons this won't work instead of working to educate, prepare, and protect our children. I will ask everybody to think about this as an issue of not how they grew up or not how we grew up, but about how our young people and how they will grow up. And if this is the information age where we have music, media, and internet are being part different, please let us share this information where and with whom we can make the most difference. I ask that you both favor with me on Bill 421. Thank you.
If schools providing health education are held to these standards, it will ensure that you are informed and healthy, and therefore stay in school and lead productive lives. So the commission envisions a population of healthy, well-informed youth across the continent, and therefore endorses this bill as providing a vital component to doing so. So we ask that you not only um, support this bill, but we also support an act relative to providing health education in schools, sponsored by Senator Chandler and Representative Hooker, as well as an act regarding comprehensive sexual education and violence prevention programs, sponsored by Representative Fox. We believe these standards for health education would make a significant contribution to the community by improving the lives of girls and young women in Massachusetts. Providing a greater number of Massachusetts youth again with comprehensive age appropriate medically accurate health education will also additionally save the state's substantial medical care costs, as well as tax dollars currently spent on reactive treatments. Because the existing health education curriculum may stand as incomplete or unfortunately inaccurate, the state is burdened with many overwhelming health care and entitlement costs. These standards can offer an effective solution due to the proven long-term financial benefits of comprehensive sexuality education. We believe this health education benchmark would significantly improve the lives of women and girls in Massachusetts and provide them the tools necessary to make health decisions at a young age. So the Commission proudly endorses this bill and we hope that this information will guide you. Also, I wanted to just put in a plug that as a mother to two very small toddlers, I, as a mother, encourage you to please report favorably on this bill. I also have a Master's in Public Health from the B School Public Health focusing in maternal and child health care, and my doctorate focuses on health disparities as well. So for so many reasons, as well as our Commonwealth Physical Health, I again strongly encourage you to report favorably on this bill and support it. Thank you for your time. I'm Patricia Quinn from the Massachusetts Alliance on Teen Pregnancy, and um, we support and believe that all Massachusetts schools should be doing um, age-appropriate, medically accurate, comprehensive sex ed. Um, so in that regard, we support a number of the bills that would promote um, health education. But I'm here specifically in support of an act relative to healthy youth. Um, I will just sort of share the point that goes to the heart of the committee's work around education, which is that about 26% of young people who leave school each year, who drop out, give teen pregnancy as a leading reason. Um, that amounts to close to about 2,000 young people in Massachusetts every year leaving because of teen pregnancy. Uh, this bill will ensure that districts that are already devoting time and resources to sex education will use those resources and that time to provide comprehensive information about pregnancy prevention and disease, HIV prevention. Uh, there's some emerging research that is kind of framed around the second decade, the 10 to 20. And the research shows that the behaviors people adopt between the ages of 10 and 20 are the behaviors that they continue throughout their lifetime. So learning about and becoming effective at making decisions about their own sexual health at this stage has implications for them going forward for the rest of their lives. So we urge the committee to report favorably on an act relative to healthy youth. Senator Chang Diaz, Senator Aish. I am Lynn Rivera. I am the project director for this project that is a research study with Alianza Hispana. Alianza Hispana is a nonprofit organization that's been here since 1971, serving the Latino community and all the residents surrounding the neighborhoods of like Greater Lawrence and Chelsea. Our goal is to empower all of the and families, strengthening communities, to develop leaders in high quality education and social services. 
when the Office of Adolescent Health and Health and Human Services funded La Vias Hispana to do this research study project to determine which curriculum best prevents unintended pregnancies, we decided to go into Boston, Chelsea, and so Greater Lawrence, being that Greater Lawrence is second ranking and highest in teen pregnancy rate, and Chelsea being third. Although we have the resources and the capacity to provide the services to protect this epidemic, well, this Latino youth, we still find strong barriers, no organization to support our efforts. The Cuidate team sees every time they do groups with the youth that the misinformation on the information they've had in the past is so devastating. When I apply to La Alianza Hispana in choosing to become the project director of this federal grant, I not only did it because it was a paying job, I did it also because I am a parent of three teenagers, two of which I raised in a city where is condensed for Latino youth. The two of them went to the same high school, Lawrence High School. One of them went off to Fisher College. The other one dropped out. One is a parent of two children and only 22. The other continues in school. One of them had a health teacher that gave a crash course on HIV and STDs, unplanned pregnancies included, and used correct common news in this discussion. The other one never had anything or anyone, including myself as the parent, talk about anything that had to do with sex. The two teenagers come from the same parents, same high school, and only two years apart in age. Our Latino culture usually tends to talk more to the girls and think that someone else is talking to their daughter. And that's where I went wrong. Someone wasn't talking to my son's girlfriend, and I didn't talk to my son. So when I took this job at La Spana, I did it with my heart full of this passion. And I urge you to please, I stand here in front of you to testify on this important bill to please pass this act on helping you. Thank you.
These messages are very harmful to you and put the responsibility for violence and harassment on the victims. We've heard in testimony and we've heard in previous testimony that several studies found that experiencing sexual violence can have lasting effects on a person's mental and physical health. Youth and even children receive many messages about sex and sexuality, and we owe it to them to reinforce the message that their boundaries are legitimate and are worthy of respect in any relationship. Ideally, these messages about how to respect each other's boundaries, consider a partner's needs and values as well as one's own, and how to address abusive and inappropriate behaviors that we observe in others, would come first and foremost from a student's family. But just as the first lessons in counting and reading are supported by math and language arts in schools, schools play a critical role in fostering communities free of violence. For these reasons and for many others, I thank this committee for their consideration and request that they support the act of the Thank you.
um, that teach uh, sexual education must ensure parental and guardian notification and must afford parents or guardians the flexibility to exempt their children. Um, so I think it's a very strong law right now that the uh, Board of Ed oversees and um, I don't believe that uh, having a, a required opt-in would actually be uh, helpful and I think it would hurt the cause that we all have. We have to go to Gardner Auditorium for the rest of the hearing.